Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Hope you guys are doing well. As the weeks roll by, let us revisit CRISPR Therapeutics and take stock of any new developments, especially because they are they have a rolling BLS for uh, their uh, exacel uh, therapy for both uh, SCD and TDT. So we have to keep a close watch or else we might lose the opportunity to catch the upswing in the share price. With that said, let's get started. <music> Welcome back friends. I invested a few hours to scan for latest updates and then summarize the current status of uh, CRISPR therapeutics. So did you hear about CRISPR's recent earnings release? Uh, did you get a chance to go through the numbers? It was on February 21st and there are some interesting stuff to unpack. First off, their EPS was actually better than expected. It was a negative $1.41 per share instead of the predicted $2.25. That's a pretty big difference. If you ask me, most of the times I would always say that uh, uh, these uh, estimates for uh, EPS and uh, revenue are not reliable uh, in companies like CRISPR Therapeutics, which, have no, which don't have a revenue stream as such. Uh, but one thing is for sure, CRISPR seems to be doing a good job of controlling their expenses. And there's a bit of a downside as well. The revenue was a huge disappointment. Uh, it was uh, it came in 99.2% uh, of uh, what was the original estimate of 7.123 million. Uh, they only made $6,000 uh, for the whole year. But here's the thing, with a company like CRISPR, it's really hard to predict revenue. Sometimes they will miss it now, but make it up later. It's all because of the tricky uh, milestone progress that can make revenue estimate way off. Most of CRISPR's revenue come from collaboration revenue and uh, milestone payments from their partner v Vertex. So that's something we have to keep in mind too. All in all, it's a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to CRISPR's earnings release. Um, in November 2022, CRISPR Therapeutics began a biologics licensing application, or BLA, uh, for uh, Exacel uh, with the FDA. The company is seeking to appro uh, get approval of Exacel in SCD and TDT uh, indications, and it's expected to complete the submission by the end of this month. So we are already around uh, more than uh, two-thirds of uh, way towards the end of the month, so in another 10 days, where this milestone is going to be met. Additionally, Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics have submitted similar applications uh, for Exacel in Europe and United Kingdom. The European Commission has granted Exacel the orphan drug designation, and it has also received priority medicines or prime designation for both SCD and TDT uh, from the EMA. Uh, the advantage uh, for of the prime designation in Europe is that uh, it makes Exacel eligible to priority review within 150 days rather than the typical 210 days. Based on this timeline, Exacel could win the approval in Europe later this year and become the first marketed CRISPR-Cas9 treatment for sickle cell disease and uh, TDT. If approved, Exacel would be the world's first CRISPR-based uh, therapy as well. Uh, the company expects to begin uh, recording sales for this product candidate in early 2024. That's a new development because I was thinking that the marketing would potentially start this year itself. Uh, but uh, for us to be realistic, I think uh, 2024 seems to be a pragmatic uh, target. And I'm hoping that it's in the first quarter of 2024. So check this out. CRISPR is working on two types of uh, therapy candidates called CTX110 and CTX130, uh, which they are hoping can be used to treat different kinds of cancers, both in the blood and in uh, solid tumors. Uh, pretty cool, right? And CTX110 is the one thing that uh, they are putting uh, a lot of efforts and focus on. It's one uh, they are considering their lead candidate, but they are also looking into CTX130 and and they are doing two studies to see uh, if it can be used to treat solid tumors like uh, renal uh, cell carcinoma as well as B cell uh, hematologic malignancies. And guess what? So far, the results have been uh, pretty encouraging. And once approved, I mean, with two indications, it's going to be a blockbuster. Uh, CRISPR also plans to start early stage studies on new CAR T candidates. Uh, CTX112 targeting CD19 antigen and CTX131 targeting CD70 antigen in the first half of 2023. So in another three months, they should have met these two objectives as well. And we might potentially hear about this in their uh, second quarter earnings release. 
and CRISPR is really making some big moves when it comes to gene therapies for treating cancer and all kinds of neurological conditions. They are partnering with a bunch of different organizations to make it happen. One of their biggest collaborations is with Vertex. They have been working together uh, way back um, since uh, 2015 and they are still going strong. And um, But that's not all. They are also teamed up with uh, Encarta to develop this thing called an anti-CD70 allogenic CAR-NK, natural killer cell. And then there's the partnership with Mofat uh, Cancer Center for something called anti-CD93 autologous CAR-T, as well as the one with uh, Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Cell uh, Center for anti-GPC3 uh, autologous CAR-T. That's a lot of collaboration, right? And if any of those collaborations succeed, uh, there's benefits for uh, CRISPR therapeutics. And at the same time, the risk and the cost is being shared with the collaborators. So that's the positive for CRISPR therapeutics. But wait, there's more. Uh, they are also working on three different diabetes targets with Viacite, and they're collaborating with Bayer on uh, Hemophilia A. And if that wasn't enough, they're also doing two in vivo therapies with Caspida Biotherapeutics. These guys are really keeping very, very busy. And man, CRISPR's pi uh, pipeline is seriously impressive. And get this, even after XSL gets approved this year, they are still going to have uh, a ton of other things coming down the pipeline. Right now, they have got five different therapies in clinical trials, which is amazing, but there is still more. They have also got three immuno-oncology treatments in the works, plus two more uh, therapies that are still in the IND enabling stage. What does this mean, right? Well, it means that uh, when these two therapies are getting ready to enter into clinical trials in the next three years, can you still imagine how much stuff they are going to be uh, doing by then? Uh, the five uh, therapies which are in pipeline right now might uh, dwindle down to three when Exacel gets approved, but these two will come back again and they will still have have five uh, therapies in the clinical trials pipeline. So that's pretty mind-boggling. And that's not all. CRISPR is not just working on therapies with partners. They've got 10 of their own therapies that they're working on on the side. And here's something cool. One of their therapies that is currently in the research stage right now is a conditioning regimen. Why is that interesting? Well, if it works out, it could be a really important piece of the puzzle for CRISPR's future therapies. It could even give them an edge over their competitors and bring in some licensing revenue. Because once the conditioning therapy is approved, it will replace the much more uh, intrusive and uh, harsh uh, chemical conditioning therapy or radi radiation conditioning therapies that are currently used. And therefore, naturally, any therapy that uses this conditioning regimen is going to perform way better uh, than uh, any, any other therapy that uses chemical or uh, radiation uh, conditioners. So that's point number one. And point number two is there could be licensing revenue as well for this conditioning regimen because other gene therapy companies might decide to license it from CRISPR. That's what I am thinking. So all of us are looking for Exacel updates, but right now I could not find any. And my whole objective of doing this video was to find out Exacel updates, uh, but then I ended up uh, drooling over their pipeline and the intellectual properties they are creating, and what a great company this is going to be. So right now there is no news on Exacel updates. No news is good news at this stage, and I hope we have updates in the coming weeks. So with that said, I think my conclusion would be that um, uh, CRISPR therapeutics is like a tightly wound spring ready to spring out. And as soon as the market conditions improve, I think we are going to see a huge spike in uh, CRISPR therapeutics share price. When is that going to happen? I don't know, but it's in the works uh, because even though the economic condition is uh, very difficult, CRISPR is right now not selling any products, so it's not going to be affected by the external economy. And also because CRISPR has uh, CRISPR therapeutics has got lots of cash in the um, balance sheet, it's not going to be affected by the uh, difficult uh, credit conditions in the market at this point of time because I don't think they're looking to raise capital or anything like that. And with that also we have this prospect of not having equity dilution in the short term. So given all these things, I'm feeling very, very optimistic optimistic. And if um, uh, we hear something positive in their second quarter result, that could potentially be the start for the turning point. But guys, the way the market works is that the share price will start going up way before all these things happen. The smart money will get into it. So we have to watch this uh, stock very carefully so that we do not miss the opportunity. So that brings me to an end of this video. Hope you liked this video and would not hesitate to press uh, the like button because it helps the algorithm and it helps the channel. Uh, in case you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and help grow this channel. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.